Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Jessa Jeremiah, and we have a fabulous show for you today. The CrossFit Games are coming to the area, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. We're also going to introduce you to some wonderful businesses here in the area, as well as talk about a festival that I think you'll be excited to learn more about. I know I am. We're joined right now by Roy Elkins, who is the founder of Broad Jam, and we're talking about Between the Waves Madison, and I'm so glad to see you today. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. So what a unique experience. Now, this is a festival and a conference. Tell us a little bit about this and who may stand to gain from this. There's, there's two uh, groups that would probably benefit from this. One, the conference is going to run four days at the Gordon Event Center in the Doubletree Hotel, and that's for musicians. And we're trying to help them make a living, make, uh, learn how to make a living making music. But we're going to have a festival in the evening as well and there's going to be 45 bands playing over two days on Friday, June 17th, Saturday, uh, I'm sorry, Friday, June 16th, Saturday, June 17th at the Majestic Theater and the Brink Complex downtown. So uh, we got a lot in store for everybody. Yeah, it sounds like a wonderful opportunity with uh, really a lot for people to to experience. Yeah. And, and what a what a great and unique thing to yeah. come upon here in the Madison area with, with music being so important. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how you came about this and some of your background. You have an interesting story. Uh, yeah, I've spent 30-plus uh, years in the music industry with a synthesizer company in Philadelphia, and I was recruited to come out to Madison uh, by Sonic Foundry, a software company in the late 90s. I started Broad Jam in uh, late 99. Uh, and it's been one of the longest running uh, internet music sites there is. And our primary mission is to help musicians uh, get their music exposed into film and TV and advertising. Um, one of the things that we've learned along the way is there's um, uh, a lot of great talent, especially in the Madison area. And if we can just help them uh, understand some of the rules of the road and how to move along in the business, that's what the conference is about. Wow, what an a great and exciting experience for somebody in the music industry who's really mm -hmm. looking to break into it more. What a challenging thing to do because uh, there's often not a lesson or a roadmap in how to do that. So I think that's really special. No, no, there really isn't. Uh, it's not like other industries where, you know, if you want to become an accountant or something like that, you go to college, you study, you go to work. There's, there's a clear path or mm -hmm. a baseball player, there's a clear path. In music, there really isn't a clear path. There's so many different avenues you can take. And one of the great sessions that we have, the opening session, is the president of Warner Pitcher's music group. Oh, wow. And he produced the music for Lord of the Rings and Austin Powers. And uh, I think he was working on one, the Wonder Woman music a couple weeks ago. And he's going to do the opening session and show uh, musicians how to get their music into film. And uh, he's somewhat legendary in the, um, in, in the industry, and we're very thankful to have him here. So that's kind of the... Uh, the vibe we're going to have at this conference. That's incredible to get the experience of somebody who has walked the yeah. path and successfully yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, we just have a couple minutes left so I want to make sure we talk more about the festival so yeah. give us some of the highlights. Well there's we have, we have 45 bands like I said a second ago uh, playing on five stages uh, at the Majestic and at the Brink Complex. Um, lots of great bands like Wheelhouse and the Beth Kelly Band and the um, uh, lower Fifth, just these great legendary bands from the Madison area. Uh, on Saturday night, we have the Clyde Stubblefield All Stars playing at the High Noon Saloon. So that's going to be that's uh, some of the great R and B and blues players in town uh, with a tribute to Clyde. So it, it's going to be a fab fabulous for fans. Wow, that's quite that's the lineup. A, yeah, <laughs> what a lot to yeah, experience. A lot of good so. Yeah. Uh, very exciting. Now let's talk a little bit about if you if you don't want to go to one of these, one or the other. Can you do one or the other, or is it a yes. combo? Yeah, well, if you want to go to the conference, the conference is, there's a, a price, a $69 price, $99 for VIP, and get you a few more things. Uh, that includes the festival. But okay. if you're a fan and you just want to go to the festival, you can pay $35. But we also, if you want to come to the uh, presentation by mm -hmm. the guy from Warner or All Day Sunday, we have a whole bunch of industry folks uh, that are uh, going to give inspirational talks on Sunday. So uh, fans can attend that as well. Oh, that's so. great. So you can do the whole thing or you can sort of do all the Yeah, Yeah, that's right. You, that's you great. certainly can. Yeah. Well, it's thanks so much. Your, your information's listed on screen here, so I encourage folks to check it out and, and be a part of it. A wonderful, wonderful opportunity.
Well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Again, this is Roy Elkins, who is the founder of Broad Jam and Between the Waves Madison. Lots of fun chatting with you today. Oh, thank you. We've got more Talk of the Town coming up after the break, so please stick around. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're talking a little bit about comic books today, and specifically the Westfield Comic Store that is on the east side. And we're joined by Josh Crawley, who's the east side retail store manager, and I'm glad to chat with you today. You too. So, what a fun uh, topic of conversation. I'm excited yes. to learn more about this. Now, I've been in your store, but I want to learn a little bit more about uh, what kinds of comics that you guys are really involved in at Westfield. Uh, primarily, we deal in new comic books and new graphic novels. Um, with the breadth of old material out there, um, it takes uh, quite a big investment of space, time, um, in addition to dealing with new stuff as well. Um, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, you you have a lot. It's almost like a library. You've got a whole lot of, of physical uh, items that are available for people to enjoy. I'm wondering a little bit about some like subscription services or things like that. Is that available? Yes. Uh, it actually makes it much easier for us uh, because our monthly catalog is about 500 pages oh every gosh. month full of comics, graphic novels. Uh, we do deal a little bit with uh, like current gaming stuff, um, Pokemon cards, magic cards, um, and a little bit with other novelties. Okay. Um, but yeah, so all that stuff is available each month, um, so we're happy to special order it. Wow, okay. So you need to be an expert in a lot of areas. <laughs> oh, jack of all trades, yeah. hopefully master of some. Now, there's a lot of folks out there, myself included, that might be new to comics and want some more information, but give us some tips, if you would, about uh, if you're overwhelmed or I think what happens to many is sort of intimidated by, by this yes. sort of category. Yes. What, what can you tell us? Uh, I would start with possibly just something you know. Um, if you're a fan of you know, a particular TV show or cartoon, see if there's something licensed. Um, and it may be intimidating or overwhelming, but it totally does not hurt to ask. Um, I have a feeling you and the staff love answering questions and talking about comic books. So it, questions are probably it be, welcome. It can be pretty great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> other things too, uh, especially uh, at the store, we carry a lot of $1 reprintings. Um, that different publishers make available as good introductory issues. Okay. Um, so, and so don't have... worry about if what you're reading is cool or acceptable. As long as you like it, go for it. Yeah. Well, I think it's all cool because nowadays it's sort of cool to be uncool. So, I mean, you could really yeah. fall in either category and be just fine. Yeah. There were some. <laughs> there were some awkward years growing up. Yeah. Well, uh, what a fun, what a fun topic to talk about. Now, let's talk about you specifically. So, I'm sure you have an answer to this, but let's talk about some of your favorite or current creators that um, that are. What are they working on now? What's new? What's out there? Uh, one of my favorites is Kelly Sue DeConnick. Uh, she actually will be in town uh, next weekend for Wiscon uh, as one of the guests of honor. Uh, she's probably best known for kind of relaunching Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel. Uh, she also actually works in TV. Um, uh, she has worked on Emerald City. Oh, wow. Uh, there's a book called Monstrous written by, I'm totally going to blank on her name right now. That's okay. We'll find out later. Marjorie but... Liu. Oh, okay. Um, you who got it. actually went to uh, UW Law School. Okay. Um, and was a customer of ours many years ago oh, when wow. she was in town. So that's exciting. Um, lots of things going on. I also love the different mediums that are possible and available if you have interest in this kind of thing. Um, there's comics, there's TV, there's movies, there's all kinds of areas that that these, um, I guess, expertise kind of flow in and out of, yeah. and that's fun. Let's talk a little bit about comics in retail specifically. Now, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been working for Westfield Comics since 2001. Oh, wow. Uh, so for about five years, uh, I was, I don't want to, Underling, we'll go with underling. Okay, Sounds yeah. fun. Rookie, new. Uh, yep, <laughs> and then uh, mostly part-time. And then for about four years, I was assistant manager of our only uh, retail location at the time. Uh, and then about six years ago, we opened the East Side store, and I became manager and have been doing that since. Wow. Well, it's exciting. Uh, you obviously enjoy what you do and have a lot of I knowledge do. and expertise, so that's wonderful. 
Now, if you want to stop in, if you've never been, or you just want to check out the latest and greatest and see Josh, they're over on Willie Street. So West Side or Westfield Comics on East Side. Yes. A little bit of a tongue twister there for me, but that was fabulous. Thanks for chatting with us about this. It was Thanks. fun. This is Josh Crawley, and we'll be back with more Talk of the Town coming up next on Wisconsin's 57. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. If you're not familiar with CrossFit, you're going to learn a little bit right now. I'm excited to introduce these two lovely folks. We've got Allison Monday and Jared Kep, who are with CrossFit Connex. And thank you for being here and sharing this with us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Nice to see you. Now, I'm excited to talk about a few things. There's so much to cover with CrossFit. <laughs> it's hard to decide what to chat about. But <laughs> absolutely, you guys are doing a few fun things coming up here. Um, let's talk about Bring a Friend Week to start. How does this work? Yeah, so Bring a Friend Week is something that we do at Connex, because uh, community is a big part of CrossFit and a big part of CrossFit Connex. So we encourage our members to bring a friend to try CrossFit, but you don't have to have a friend at CrossFit Connex to try it out. So from May 29th through June 4th, all of our classes are free to try. So come on, you can sign up online or give us a call and check it out. I love that concept because I think that there's maybe a misconception out there among many that you need to really kind of be experienced in no. CrossFit <laughs> or be an experienced athlete, but this gives the opportunity for people to come and check it out and realize that this is a sport for everybody. So Absolutely. I think that's great. Uh, okay, so we've also got Strong and Stretchy. I love this name. How does Strong and Stretchy differ, differ from maybe a regular CrossFit class? Yeah, so Strong and Stretchy is a class that Jared and I teach together. Um, so I'm a yoga instructor and he is the CrossFit coach. So we do a power flow yoga warm up. Then Jared takes you through a CrossFit workout, and then we do a yoga cool down, so more of a yin style. Okay, very nice. Yeah. I enjoy that. That's great. And it's really good because the yoga will help with the mobility and flexibility that you need to do the CrossFit movements. Ah, very good. Okay, and I like that about uh, CrossFit and about what you're talking about, that it's a it's really a workout that helps with a lot of different areas. It's, we're not just talking about strength, we're talking about things like mobility and flexibility, which could come in handy for somebody who maybe is aging or struggling yeah. in those areas. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about your backgrounds here. So, oh, yeah. Allison, okay. how long have you been doing CrossFit and yoga? Um, I, I kind of joke, but I've been doing yoga for about two decades now, um, so pretty seriously for the past eight years, and uh, CrossFit for five. So they've been a big part of my life for quite a while. Wow, congrats. That's, a, that's a time under your belt for <laughs> sure. Yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you, Jared. So obviously you enjoy CrossFit quite a bit. What do you think some of the things are that are most impactful for you and enjoyable? I just love the everyday challenge of the daily workouts, the community, the camaraderie that we have at our gym. It's just a great environment to be around. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it really is sounds like a, a community of people. I mean, you're getting to, it's any time that you can get together and sweat with somebody and work <laughs> hard and make a difference in your life, I think that's impactful for the yeah. group. And I think that's really a nice way to, to work out and, and improve on some flexibility and strength. Yeah. Um, for viewers out there who aren't familiar with CrossFit or uh, just have thought maybe, you know, this isn't for me, what would you say to them? Why CrossFit? It's, well, CrossFit is defined as uh, constantly varied functional movements at high intensity, keyword being functional movements. These are everyday movements that people will have to be able to do every day, all the time. Uh, so it's just a good thing to get everyone to get moving and stay healthy. Absolutely. Yeah, and I can imagine, you know, <clears throat> Part, there's, there's a lot of training that goes into being a CrossFit gym, and part of that training is making sure that your, um, your CrossFit components are safe and not only effective, but really safe for, for the person that you're working with. So you know how to make sure and walk people through that. Yep. Yep. Um, what do you think is the hardest part about CrossFit? <laughs> Probably taking a rest day. Uh, the environment's just so like infectious. You want to always be around there. I've had the head coach tell me to leave because I've been <laughs> there so many yep. or so long in the day that he's like, you need to go home, take a rest day. It's just wow. an awesome atmosphere. It goes to be back around. to the the safety part, but yeah. I sure hope that I find a workout that I love so much that they're kicking me out of the gym. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a bad thing. And with the community there, it's you know you become very close friends with the people that you're yes. working out with. So it's. You, it feels more like you're hanging out with your really good friends than you're doing a workout and yeah. you're kind of suffering through. Um, so yeah, it's pretty addicting to be there. 
that sounds like a great thing. Yeah, so. <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that. That was, that was a lot of fun and, and lots of great knowledge with such a, a breadth of things that we could have talked about, but yeah. that you guys did great. It was wonderful meeting you. This thank is you. Allison Monday and Jared Kep with CrossFit Connex. Nice seeing you. And we'll be back. We've got more Talk of the Town for you coming up after the break. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. You might be familiar with University Coin and Jewelry in Middleton, but you may not know that they've got a new owner, and I'm excited to introduce you to him. This is Jason Rassi from University and Coin and Jewelry. Thanks for being here today. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So exciting. So I think I maybe spilled the beans on our first topic of conversation, but what's yeah, new? <laughs> that is what's new with us, is that uh, I purchased a store last week. Um, my boss, my former employee, uh, not my boss anymore, I guess, yeah. uh, he owned the store for 33 years. Wow. Um, I worked for him for seven years, and uh, he gave me a really good opportunity to buy a well-established business, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's a great opportunity. That's so. quite the promotion. Yeah, it is, yeah. I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> That's really exciting. Good for you. Thanks. It's such a, such a success story. Um, let's talk a little bit about University Coin and Jewelry and what, sure. what you offer, what people can expect. Yeah, happily. Um, we're a resale business, so we're in the business of purchasing and reselling jewelry, coins, watches, uh, people's valuables in general. I tell people on the phone, anything you'd keep in a safety deposit box is more or less what we're gonna deal with at the store. And uh, you can come in and expect good service. All of us have been there for a long time and uh, it's a fun job. I wow. like it. That's, that is a fun job. And I imagine you get items in all the time from different mm -hmm. people that are um, unique and maybe you've never seen before. So yeah. what are some of the highlights of things that you've brought Absolutely. in? Absolutely. Um, one of the fun things I like about my job is that we deal with people from all walks of life. Different people come in every day and we get to see different stuff every day. So it's almost like some of the TV shows you see nowadays that you know people are dealing with cool stuff. We do kind of the same thing. Um, we're a little bit more focused than you know some of the shows on TV that you'll watch, but um, as far as some cool things that have come in recently that come to mind, um, gold is a really big um, popular item overseas, I guess. Oh, okay. And uh, we had a lady that uh, was from India, and part of your wedding dress um, in India, as far as people that are well off, people that are wealthy, is they love gold. They love gold jewelry. And we literally had uh, an Indian wedding dress come in, and the lady had a belt that was li like the size of a Aaron Rodgers belt, oh you know, gosh. like a WWE belt. <laughs> um, she had gold bracelets that covered both of her arms, and a lot of this jewelry was made out of pure gold. Oh my gosh. She had over thirty thousand dollars worth of gold jewelry, wow. uh, as far as just what was part of her wedding dress. Um, the second item that I was thinking of. Um, is we had a pocket watch come in from a local family and it belonged to Russian royalty. Um, back when the czars in Russia were in place, um, they had really just unbelievable stuff. And a lot of those people, unfortunately, were you know killed off and um, a lot of the jewelry stayed in Russia and not many items were smuggled out of the country. Not many pieces made it to the US. But we had this unbelievable pocket watch come in last year that was part of Russian royalty and just the sentiment of history. I'm a big history buff. It was one of the coolest things I've had in the store in the last year or so. Oh, that's so, so exciting. Yeah, what a great history lesson, yeah. I imagine. Too. Yeah, it's You're getting fun. all these yeah. incredible A little bit of in. everything, yeah. Wow. Uh, that's, that's a lot of fun. And I want to make sure that we talk about, we don't have a lot of time left, but mm -hmm. the gold and silver markets are sort sure. of... Uh, a mystery to some folks. What are they doing? Yeah, a lot of people call us on the phone, ask us, you know, what are the markets doing? Um, some people recollect that five, six years ago, silver and gold were exceptionally high. Um, we had people beating down our door to sell us all their stuff, and they're smart. They should have. Um, gold and silver dropped in value in the last three or four years uh, from that peak. It was basically the peak of all time in history of what gold and silver were worth. And we've had three or four years now of just pretty modest prices. The good news is, is that the prices are starting to go back up, which has kept me busy. Uh, this year especially, gold and silver have started to go back up. So it basically gets us busy all over again. It's free advertising for me, and people are pretty happy with the prices right now that we pay them for their gold and silver jewelry especially, as well as coins. Wow, good yeah. to know. Yeah, so absolutely. the 
the the peaks and valleys. Of yeah, there the are. There definitely are. And uh, right now we're on the upswing again. So wow. it's good for everybody. It's an exciting time Absolutely. at University Coin and Jewelry yep. for many reasons. It well, is. huge congratulations Thank to you, you for um, to quit the promotion, like I said, taking <laughs> yeah. on the ownership of the store. That's it's a great exciting. opportunity. Yep, I'm, ex I'm excited. Well, Jason Rassi is with University Coin and Jewelry in Middleton. And that's all for us. Thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. Join us next time on Talk of the Town.